Hello, Jamie from Inky and Scrappy, sharing with you today a reveal wheel card with an on the front feature that also rotates when you rotate your wheel. So I'm going to pull out some galaxy backgrounds that I've already done just to do this. Somebody had asked how to make a front rotating piece on a reveal wheel card but not interrupt your actual reveal wheel feature or sentiment. So this was a quick try at making that work for them. So I will do a real time demonstration pop out video with this one. I will have to do the voiceover because I was learning as I went. So I took out some images that I had already pre-colored but I ended up not using them for my final card but all I needed was the rocket for demonstration purposes here. So I'm using a mini Brad again and this one was if I would have had my card done I probably would have flipped the Brad around in um, if that makes sense. It might as we go along here. So I'm just lining that up. I taped it in place kind of sorta and so we're trying to figure out where I need to put that element on the front to make it go around. And there is the reveal wheel. So we're going to pop this into the back. I have foam on the outside of my little circle there. And my thought was that I could put the prongs underneath. In which if I would have done it that way it probably would have been a lot easier in the long run but because I didn't have it done when I placed this I couldn't do it that way so as long as your adhesive is not touching any part of that brad be it that top of the brad or the prongs of the brad you will be fine here and these are fairly thin foam adhesives I didn't have to go with a thick one for my brad here and then we're just going to line that up and pop the wheel in place on the back of the card or the back panel of the card and then I'm going to try to figure out where that brad is and here is where if I'd had it the other way around it probably would have been easier to figure out exactly where that placement is as it stands I cut my circle a little bit off center of where that brad head is and so it just made my adhesive have to be a little bit narrower on the outside than it would have had to have been otherwise. So the idea is that you can cut a hole as long as you don't, you know, go into that space of that original reveal wheel window. So I could have gone with the same size hole as is on the back of the reveal wheel. But then my element on the front would have had to be bigger than that hole. And I didn't know if I wanted to go that much bigger with my my moon on the front. So I pulled in the little circle die from Bubbles of, I think it's the Bubbles of Joy Sentiments or something like that. And so just a really small circle works here. I want to say this one is about three quarters of an inch of a circle. And I think I'm just a little bit off center there, and you can see it in the picture. So if I'd have lined it up a little bit better when I cut it, it probably would have been a little bit easier. So for my my element to spin or to work, it needs to not impede the brads on the other things. So I don't want it to get stuck or to get caught. And so I'm going to take some foam adhesive strips and run them along the outside. So if I had the brad head on the front part here, I wouldn't have had to worry so much about my placement because that brad head isn't going to move, you know, aside from right where it is. Where the prongs, on the other hand, do tend to spin or turn sometimes. So I'm going to have to go in here and trim them. And of course I couldn't find my, my snips, so I ended up using my scissors. Shh. We won't tell anybody, right? They're pretty thin. So I'm just going to lift them up here and then get the scissors. And 
and I left this, I think it's only at one and a half times speed, so it is fairly, fairly slowed down as per the rest of the video is not to try to keep it within my time frame here. And so I'm just going to snip those off here. And then I can flatten those back out and make sure that I'm not going to bump them when I spin my reveal wheel with my adhesive on the front. Again, if I had all of my pieces already to roll, like my reveal wheel sentiments and stuff done, I could have avoided that. But sometimes we have to make sure an idea works before we put in the effort, right? I don't know. It's how I roll. So I'm just going to pop these on there quick. Remove the adhesive there. And then this is about the size of the moon that I'm going to go with. It's not exact. I think I go with a little bit bigger one. I'm not exactly sure. It might be similar in size. And then I'm going to take my rocket feature. And then just make sure that it works. So you want your rocket to be going in whatever direction your words are going to be. And I realized that you can't see the words underneath where the rocket's going to cover the window. So just make sure that your sentiment does not overlap that portion. And you'll see, I think, in the next step how I make sure that it does not. So I just pulled this apart and started, you know, actually assembling my final project here. So I'm taking that sentiment and kind of trying to line it up in the circle. And I realized if I took the circle reel off of the card, it was a lot easier to line up my sentiment in it. And I just double checked with the rocket that I was going to have room to put the rocket on there. And then I pre-powdered my reveal wheel circle. And then I'm just going to one last check on making sure that it's all good. And then, yep, my head, because I have to make sure I'm right where I need to be. And then I will emboss this with some alabaster embossing powder from Brutus Monroe. And then, of course, I don't know if my fingers were sticky or what, but it just was not having any of it. Usually it doesn't stick so bad, but I also had adhesive on there, so like tape, so that could have been part of the reasoning. So now that I have that, I don't know if I show, I think I show splattering. So I realized that my reveal wheel is a darker black than my galaxy. And so I did just end up splattering it. And it didn't matter to me if the whole back was splattered or not because, well, it's going to be covered up anyways. So I just wanted to put some splatters on there so it kind of had that you know, galaxy feel to it as the rest of the card does. I could have probably used the other part of that galaxy backdrop and cut my reveal wheel from it, but I don't know. It was a thinner water watercolor paper, and so I just didn't think it had the strength that I wanted for my reveal wheel. And then I'm just going to pop up Put a layer of foam adhesives behind there, none of them touching or hindering the rotation of the reveal wheel. And then I will pop that on there. Make sure that it spins around freely, and it does. I did end up not lining it up the greatest, and so I ended up trimming off a little bit on the top and the side that I don't think you see. And so I'm figuring out the size that I want for my circle. I didn't want stitches so I had to go back and find some of my I think they're spellbinders nesting dies in my plain circles so I took those and then I'm gonna make my moon so I'm using the Tim Holtz moon mask here but not really so 
I'm gonna ink this with some yellow and then take that moon mask piece and then just ink over it in pumice stone to darken that in some spots. Give my moon some character. And then I'm just gonna place that over part of it and die cut it. So it's kind of got that moon look to it. And then of course I got a piece that was like chipped in the corner. So I just cover that up with my image. So I went with a thicker foam tape for around my mat, my, my spinning mechanism here, just because I wanted to make sure that it was going to have enough clearance to spin freely. And I'm just putzing with which one was, you know, because I wasn't on center, I had to adjust my adhesives accordingly so they didn't rub along the outside of my circle. I am adding a dab of glue there so I can just wiggle and adjust as needed here a little bit. And then I will color my images. So here are the Copic colors and Ohuhu markers that I used to color all of those images. I did not color them on screen. I did them all off. So try to save time for the video. So now I just need to figure out where my rocket is going to go for sure here. And the easiest way is to get your clear or your unsentimented reveal wheel in the window there and then line it up. So then I knew I wasn't going to be hindering my sentiment at all. I'm over the moon for you. And then I'm going to pop this up with some Big Mama foam tape. Just a very thin foam tape would work here. And you don't have to do this step. I just find that it's easier to move the reveal wheel when your back panel is popped up just slightly. So it doesn't really have a whole lot of bulk. I would say it's probably the thickness of, oh, maybe a little bit more than a 3M adhesive, you know, foam adhesive. It's not overly thick. And then I am notorious for knowing that I'm not going to be using something so I don't color it on an image. And I wasn't planning on leaving his boots on. and so. I ended up deciding that I liked him hanging off the card front, so I had to go in and color his boots quick. Whoopsies. And so I'm just placing my images, laying them out in a galaxy type of way. I don't know. Is there a galaxy type of way? I don't know. I Colors, trying to make a you know, visual triangle or line. So that teal and pink up in the corner and then the teal on the rotating piece. And then there's that teal and pink on him. And then I just put the other ones offset there. And then I will throw in the stars haphazardly. And I was like thinking I had five and I only had four. I was kind of sad about that. And I almost colored another one, but I didn't. I end up pulling out some Trinity stamps, glow in the dark. I think it's stars and moons. I only use the stars in this instance, though. So I will add those stars in to finish up my card. The base I'm using is just a pre-done card, like a, a colored card base from, I'm pretty sure it was Hobby Lobby. You know, because they're like 50% off, so it's like five bucks for a box. And they're already folded and colored. Yeah, it just makes life easy sometimes. And then I'm adding glossy accents to the window on the rocket and his mask. And if you ask me when you see the, if you'd see the extra haul, why is his mask so thick, Jamie? Oh, because my finger got in the glossy adhesive. 
or glossy accents when it was almost dry and left a fingerprint and the only way to cover that was to add another layer of glossy accents. So his mask got two glossy accents. It's extra thick. He's in space. It should be extra thick, right? I think so. We'll go with that. I added a little rocket to the outside of my envelope. I'm not great about doing the envelopes, but if I have them and I'm thinking about it, I will do it. I decided on a different sentiment for this one. I actually pulled out a sentiment from Brutus Monroe's, one of their past monthly kits that was also a rocket type one, and it was follow your dreams. So I hope you enjoyed. I will do the pop-up video, and thank you for all that subscribe.